a very good morning I bid to Dr. Kwa, Dr. Tate, and my fellows. First of all, I would like to start the presentation by introducing my group. We are group 4 from tutorial 4. I am Li Xiu Wei, and my groupmates are Li Yanzi, Tan Chiu Yi, Li Xinjie, and Chua Jia Qi. In this presentation, we are going to discuss about the case application for Chapter 10, which is Teaming Up for Tackle. We have divided our presentations into four main parts. For the first part, is a 10-point summary based on case applications. Second, discussion questions with answer review. Third, references. And last, is the Kahoot quiz. This slide shows the case application assigned to our group. It's available on 10 editions of Fundamental of Management ebook, page 346. You can go through the passage on ebook. Now, I'm going to start the first part, which is 10 point summary based on case application. Moving on to the summary, I have summarized the case applications into 10 points. Firstly, the Boeing 737 is the best selling jet airliner in the history of aviation. Second, Boeing has to ramp up the production of aircraft to meet the demand as many airlines place the order of its aircraft. Number three, Boeing managers face the challenges of producing more aircraft with no increase in the size and scope of the manufacturing facility. Number four, hence, Boeing employee innovation teams use their creative work to fulfill the demands efficiently and effectively. Number five, the first employee team found a way of hanging four main landing gear tire using Canva wheel cover to solve the problem of three meter faster hole. Number six, the second team figures out the ways to rearrange their workspace to map four engines at the same time. Number seven, the third team of workers in the pen process revamp their work routines and cut. 10 minutes to 15 minutes per worker for each job. Number eight, the fourth employee team uses five years to perfect the process for installing the planned landing gear hydraulic tubes. Number nine, these employee teams comprise seven to 10 workers with diverse skills and focus on a specific part of a jet. Lastly, this team meet one a week but take about 11 days for the final assembly of a 737 jet and try to shave off two more days. That's all from the summary. Now, I will pass to Yan Zi for discussion questions. Thank you. Thank you, Siu Wei, for presenting. I'm Li Yan Zi, and there are four discussion questions in this case application. I'm going to discuss about question one. What types of teams do the employee teams appear to be? Explain. There are three types of teams which are cross function team, problem solving team, and self managed team. The first one is cross functional team, which is a group of people that are grouped from different departments and field and have same goal. Example from case application. The employee teams are group of 7 to 10 workers with this similar skill from mechanics to assembly workers to engineers. And the second one is self-managed team, which is essentially independent, responsible for all aspects in producing and getting the work done. This kind of team can operate without a manager. For instance, the team member meet as often as once a week. The rest of the time they work in separate teams. If they have problem in producing jet, they need to take action on it, have the authority to make and carry out the decisions without reporting to manager. 
Lastly, Dash employees appear to be a problem-solving team, which are the teams from the same department and have the effort to improve work activities and solve specific problems. They need to come up with solutions to problems just like a member from each team need to solve a specific problem in producing jet. For example, a team need to come up with solutions on how to rearrange its workspace to make four engines at the same time instead of three engines. That's all from me. I will pass to my next member, Tan Chu Yi. Thank you. Thank you, Yanzi and Tan Chu Yi. I'll continue with question two. As this story illustrated, Sometimes, it may take a long time for a team to reach its goal. As a manager, how would you motivate a team to keep on trying? Firstly, as a manager, I will motivate a team to keep on trying through performance evaluation and reward system. I will evaluate the performance of team members both individually and jointly. Then, based on their efforts and the outstanding works, I will give rewards such as recognize and applaud their achievements, pay raise, awards and gifts to the teams and the member who contributes the most. When managers give the rewards to them in order to express the gratitude and appreciation of their well-done job, the team will feel that their hard work is being recognized and commitment is worth it. Hence, this will boost their spirit inspire and motivate them to keep on trying new things in order to achieve better results and reach the goal efficiently and effectively. The second point is the climate of openness. If there is a presence of confirmed pressure, team members will give consistent replies although some of them know that it is not a good solution. Hence, as a manager, I need to create an environment in which the team members are allowed to discuss and feel free to speak out their own opinions and ideas without fear of retaliation. With the climate of openness, the team members will not experience the confirmed pressure which indirectly can motivate the team to keep on trying. This is because in such an environment, the members are motivated to come up with a lot of opinions and discuss which one is a more suitable and better solution. Thus, this can encourage team to keep on trying to implement the solution to achieve the goal. The third point is adequate resources. Managers need to ensure that the resources like timely information and proper equipment are sufficient in order to encourage a team to keep on trying. This is because without abundant resources, the team does not have the ability to keep on trying since there are no resources available for them to carry out the activities and this will eliminate their spirit to keep on trying. Thus, with adequate resources, the team will have more chances and motivation to keep on trying to carry out activities. As a result, the job can be performed effectively and the goal can be achieved in a short time. The fourth point is the climate of trust. As a manager, I need to trust the team can perform well and do a good job which will not disappoint me. With the belief from managers, the team will have more confidence to try and carry out activities because it means that the managers give full support to them and allows the team to make their own decisions. Thus, the team will be motivated to keep on trying when they are being trusted by the manager and the goal can be achieved effectively and efficiently. The last point is specific goals. As a manager, in order to inspire the team to keep on trying, I need to set a clear goal. This is because when the goal is clear, the team will know what should be done and it can facilitate a clear communication and help the teams to focus on getting the result. Thus, they will be motivated to keep on trying and the goal can be achieved more faster. That's all for question 2. Now I'll pass to next colleague, Singjie. Thank you, Chu Yi. Good day to Dr. Kwa and Dr. Tay. My name is Lee Sinjie and now I'll present the third question. 
What role do you think a team leader needs to play in this type of setting? Explain. First of all, a team leader is essential in all types of teams in order to create an effective team and keep things run smoothly. These are some common roles of a team leader in problem-solving team and cross-functional team. The main role or the part of being a team leader is to provide direction, vision, and motivation to the team. This is because team leader is carrying out the same roles as a member but with the additional leader responsibilities. Therefore, team leaders have the responsibility to build a motivational environment. Secondly, the team leader will help the team to make decisions depend on consensus after having the discussion so that the task can be carried out by the member. Besides that, team leader will have to monitor the achievement of the team as a unit so that he or she can report to the top management about the progress. Next, team leader will establish ground rules such as using what types of communication tools for working with each other. Other than this, Team leaders also act as a spokesperson, facilitator, or coach within the team. People might wonder on why team leader is needed in a self-managed team. Although self-managed teams are autonomous in terms of how they manage and carry out their work, they still need guidance from leaders within the organization. These are few reasons that explain why a self-managed team needs a team leader. First, they need team leader to receive direction from top-level management so that the member can carry out their role in the team. Next, the team leaders have to report to top manager regarding the team's performance so that the organization can keep track on their progress. Besides, since self-managed teams are not supervised by managers, therefore, in order to make sure the members can work effectively, the team leaders are there to provide the conditions for high motivation. Now, let us discuss what is the role of a team leader in self-managed team. This is because there are some difference between self-managed teams and other types of teams. Instead of leading the team, they are more on acting as a supporting role which includes identifying the long-term career and personal development needs of the team within the context of the overall organization. Besides, they also serve as mentors or trainers within an organization. Team leaders provide on-the-job training and new hire orientation to the departmental or team process and provide day-to-day -day operational guidance. This is because the team leaders have the skills and leadership capabilities to understand the job task and what it takes to be an excellent worker. When a team is working without a manager, all these tasks will be given to team leader. Next, the self-managed team has to organize, plan, coordinate, and take command of the work. Thus, you need a team leader that is able to do all this. Last but not least, the team leaders are there to agree in discussion with the team to achieve work standards and team goals. That's all from my part. Thank you for listening and I will pass it to my colleague, Jia Qi. Thank you, Xingjie and Chua. Now I would like to discuss about the last question. Using Exhibit 10 stick, what characteristics of effective teams would these teams need? Explain. Exhibit 10 seeks a team effectiveness model that describes the characteristics of effective teams. There are four key components include the context, the team composition, work design, and process variable. The first component is context, is all the things that surround the team. One of the contextual factors is adequate resources. Resources or the support are the item that most impacts a team's ability to perform its job. Resources can include timely information, administrative assistance, and etc. Secondly, leadership and structure. It helps to focus on the specific of work and ways to integrate individual skills. Team members should make sure each other contribute equally and share the workload. Next, climate of trust. Interpersonal trust among team members will facilitate the cooperation. They were more willing to take risks in innovation and work. The final contextual factor of an effective team is performance evaluation and reward system. It will keep team's members both individually and mutually accountable. Secondly, the composition component. This includes variables related to how teams should be staffed. The first factor is abilities of members. It depends on members' knowledge, skills, and abilities. An effective team requires technical expertise, 
problem solving and decision making skills, and interpersonal skill. Secondly, personality factor that significantly influence individual behavior and could extend it to team behavior. Many of the dimensions identified in the Big Five personality model. Teams will perform well if higher in the means level of traits like conscientiousness, openness, and agreeableness. Next, the composition factor is allocating roles. Diversity and field various roles are needed to fulfill the different needs. Individuals can play multiple roles based on their skills and preference. There are nine potential teams roles using team management profile. Next, diversity factor. Their optimistic views say that diversity of skill is preferable, and opposite views show that disruptive effects of diversity will decline over time. Next, size of team. The most effective teams have fewer than ten members, and experts suggest using the smallest number of people who can do the task. Next, member flexi flexibility. It relates to Individuals' flexibility or capable ability to complete more than one kind of task greatly improve its adaptability and make it less reliant on any single member. Lastly, members' preference. Individual preference should be considered as well as abilities, personalities, and skills. When people who would prefer to work alone are required to team up, there's a direct threat to the team's moral and to individual members' satisfaction. The third key component is work design. It is content of one's work tasks, activities, relationships, and responsibilities. It enhances team member motivation and increases team effectiveness. Important work design elements include autonomy, skill variety, task identity, and task significance. Effective teams need to work together and take collective responsibility because they make the work more interesting to perform. The final category related to team effectiveness is process variables. It reflects those things that go on in the teams that influence the effectiveness. The first process factor is a common purpose. A common and meaningful purpose provides direction, momentum, and commitment for members. This purpose is vision. It's broader than specific goals. Secondly, specific goals. Successful teams translate their common purpose into specific, Challenge, measurable, and realistic performance goals. These specific goals facilitate real communication and maintain their focus on getting results. Next, team efficacy. Effective teams have confidence in themselves and always believe they can succeed. Success breeds success. Teams that have been successful raise their belief about future success, which in turn motivates them to work harder. Conflict level. Conflict can actually improve team effectiveness. Team that are completely void of conflict are likely to become apathetic and stagnant. However, relationship conflict is dysfunctional, but task conflicts are beneficial. The last point is social loafing. Effective teams work to minimize the tendency for social loafing by making members individual and mutually accountable for the team's goals, purpose, and approach. So that's all for me. Thank you. Next, I will pass to Xiu Wei. Thank you, dear T. Here comes to the end. The third part for this presentation is references. This is the list for references for our presentation. Please have a look. And don't forget to type out our Kahoot quiz. The link will be provided in Spectre, and you can also type the campaign to join our Kahoot quiz. That's all from our group. Thank you for listening to us. Have a nice day.